Welcome to another episode of the Life Career Roadmap with my special guest, Rafael Reis. Rafael, welcome to the channel. Well, thank you, Sema. It's a pleasure to be here. Thanks for the invitation. Oh, welcome. Uh, Rafa, the first question, two questions I'd like to ask you uh, is, uh, or are, um, where you come from and what's your professional background? Hey, well, I was born in Brazil mm -hmm. in 1984. Mm -hmm. um, Precisely? Yeah, <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> um, I I uh, I grew up in Rio de Janeiro. Mm -hmm. um, I was born um, in a mid class family. Um, I had the best education my parents could afford. Uh, that's this is something that um, really gave me um, a good start. Um, I was never rich. Uh, my family was um, um, a class of. Um, as I say, mid-class workers. My father um, used to work in a bank. My mom is an educator and psychologist. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we've been through um, a very normal upbringing, um, doing things um, just as a normal way. Mm -hmm. um, I then developed um, business acumen um since very young mm -hmm. um i have always been involved into um new business ventures as a kid um i have always been into um entrepreneurship and uh, and always innovating always doing something that's been always my my passion and i can see you now um by looking back um, what I have um, been through. Mm -hmm. um, it's, um, it's an episode of something um, quite interesting that I've done when I was maybe less than 10 years old. Mm -hmm. I set up um, in my apartment block a, a push bike washing um, business <laughs> where I <laughs> I've employed my friends <laughs> <laughs> to to work um in my joint. Um we had um salaries, um we had um a structure, a business structure um in a way. We had stages, I've created um stages um of where our customers would have bring their push bikes, leave it, and we would have delivered them back to their apartment clean um, and ready to go, greased, done and dusted. We used to love push bikes. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, the, and the joint was quite successful, right? Um, uh. We started working within the building complex. Suddenly, the word spread out to the neighborhood. Um, so the kids next to us and the next apartment block buildings um, started to come along, which at first um, the whole staff in the apartment block thought, okay, they just come in lunch to play. But the volume of kids coming with bikes were growing exponentially. <laughs> And I set up these in a washing day underneath um, in the garage. Mm -hmm. um, there was this bunch of kids um, and a lot of bikes coming through and we were turning volumes. And I was getting home with all this cash. <laughs> and I was hiding from my mom because oh, I my know she was, <laughs> this cash comes from. <laughs> So they didn't um, know you were the entrepreneur downstairs. <laughs> no, 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 nobody knew it. Nobody knew it. And uh, the story goes for, for quite a while. There's uh, some, you know, fun parts to it. But long story cut short, uh, my mom found a bunch of cash in um, within my toys, in, within my, my stuff. Um, and then she pressed me and then I said, mom, I run a business. And she's like, mm -hmm. What? <laughs> How did what it 
A business? What do you mean? <laughs> what business? Mom, I own a pushback washing bay um, down in a garage. And, and it's just like, what do you mean? It doesn't make any sense. All my friends are my employees and I pay them salaries. Um, and it was a really good time because we had enough time, you know, we had enough cash to buy anything we wanted. Um, I mean, we were not provided of luxuries <laughs> of, 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 of every sort. But we, you know, through the work, I found a way to finance the things we wanted. Um, so spare parts of our push bikes, um, skateboards, um, you know, ice cream, stuff. Oh, the that dreams we... of a, a childhood. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Coca-Cola, you know, all these Kinder eggs. Back in the days, you know, they were expensive. We couldn't afford that. But we had it all. And then my mom said me to, you know, it's like I give the money back to your customers and that's it. Mm. Yeah. And what do you <laughs> do? I can't do that, mom. Um, what I can do is finish the joint and and that's it. Um, but I'm glad my mom understood. My mom was quite heavy handed. And um, mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then... I I just I just you know stopped the joint. There were all the joints coming, you know, as I was growing up. <laughs> I can imagine the fruitful ideas. Uh, yeah, yeah. But then 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 uh, I yeah I just I realized I had to be a bit less successful and low profile. Uh, mm-hmm. But you know things that we that happens in life when we we are very young teach us lessons growing up as we don't even know this is coming out in our head. We don't even know what plans God have to us. And, and it's so amazing that the ends connect at some point in life that you make, you make a connection to a moment in your life in the past that it, it all makes sense. And, I'm I'm a firm believer of God. Um, I'm Christian, and I believe that nothing happens for no reason. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a plan in place. That's how I believe, you know. But that's just me, and and that was it. So that's my upbringing. That's that's where I come from, and I was in Rio de Janeiro. And then um, with all this experience of having the the ideas of hey, why not? doing this right so you could be caught by the uh the janitor of the building that could see you you doing something in there right but was your mom that really got you <laughs> uh yeah i bribed the staff of the of the building to let me run my joint <laughs> oh my goodness it's the next level thing <laughs> it is look i had a amazing um relationship with all the staff they all really get along with me because at the same time um i'm in in a mid class upbringing i was quite down to earth as in my mom my mom and my dad they they separated very young mm-hmm. I, i mean i was very young and my dad who had all the financial um resources um let us and suddenly my mom was you know having to provide to two kids at a level that she couldn't keep up so she was really struggling to do everything she could to keep us at school to keep us doing things so but obviously because of that um finance finances were were tight And I had to, I had to do my things to to figure out what to do, and and that's funny because that taught me to, you know, um, identified with people that wasn't as as provided as I once was, and I quickly realized that when much younger I was much, you know, um, um, 
I, I had a, a, a different financial position than I had a couple of years later and still very young. And I realized that. I realized. And then I was like, well, hey, what I uh, what I go through as a as a kid now, it's it's not different to what this guy who works in the building I I live um, goes through. So I kind of got some identity with with them, and they seen me not as as not kid, but a a cool kid that you know, <laughs> yeah, a different cool kid, not the cool kid that pretends to be cool, but you're cool. no a genuine <laughs> cool kid. I was cool. I think so. <laughs> I thought so, right? And then, yes, and then, and then I used to, I know, I knew, I knew they liked their drinking. I knew they liked their, their smokes and stuff. And I used to go and buy a pack of smokes. Um, back then, you know, there were no rules. You know, no, no rules. <laughs> you could go to the to the fuel station, buy a pack of smokes, and then come yeah. back. And that's what I used to do. So. I don't think my mom knows that too now, but she doesn't speak English, so she wouldn't know. Someone will translate to her. <laughs> Someone may translate on oh, to mom, her. I'm sorry, mom. Sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> I had to do it because there were so many kids coming in the building and yeah. they had to let, to let it go. So there are many questions now that I'm very curious to know about. Let, let's, let's start with, like, you uh, brought this idea and you started your little businesses in there, a business in there. So the other kids were coming and for you to wash their pushbacks. Anybody yes. else came as, hey, I'm doing my business like you and it'll be better than you. Did you have this kind of have this kind of situation that someone was taking your idea and doing the same thing and getting your clientele or everyone became your client? Well, this is getting, <laughs> I mean, this this is quite interesting. I haven't talked about it for so long, but um, I realized that could be a problem because as a kid, you you had your enemies, you know, you had your friends, your besties and your enemies, right? Mm -hmm. What I did, I, I've approached everybody and I said, look, let's all work together. Let's all do that. So because I did that and every cool kid in the block in that building was uh, working with me and I I guess they didn't find, you know, um, the means of doing and setting their, their joint to compete against me because we all together back then. Maybe if I was to last a little longer, that would have happened, but my mom... Yeah caught a short. <laughs> it, it ran on it got, it went on for months but yeah but was it long enough for you to have the taste that oh this is something good right and yeah. getting money and and providing and of course you said something very important when you said um the kids were working with me not for you yes yes right? they're working with me so yes. yeah that's a very they had salaries though they technically should be working for me <laughs> <laughs> but you include them as a team right yeah 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 well, maybe i'll higher... say that mm. maybe i've said that because this is how we work here at facto um, um there's no one working for me mm -hmm. no one everyone mm -hmm. here is working with me and i work with them um so every you... single person who's works at factor is working together with me and not for me wonderful so Sorry. the and line come from the timeline come from the, that time when you had this idea that, that you'll be working with you and became your uh, uh, ethical uh, approach for business yes well there we go maybe cat maybe that comes from them yeah yes. maybe that's yeah. that yeah, interesting. And the other thing they'd like to, uh, you said that many other ventures or joints came after. So, uh, yeah, when you uh, growing up, that you saw the possibility and having ideas, because the entrepreneurs, the genuine entrepreneurs, they have ideas and they take the risk, right? So they yeah. see where it's a possibility. You took the risk, 
you had to do your the man, managing the risks and putting everything together and getting the the old ones understanding that was something cool to do. Um, growing up and the decision to study your first uh, under degree uh, course was based on the ideas of becoming entrepreneur or was a pressure that we have uh, in society that you must do something, you study something to be able to be someone? What a deep question. <laughs> Good question. Well, then we have to remote back to the context of where I come from and growing up. Um, so in, in, in if we go back to that context, what we want um, at back then was stability. Mm -hmm. And being an entrepreneur goes on the other hand, uh, an opposite direction. So, and obviously much younger, immature, and trying to, you know, do everything that, you know, looking to the mistakes that other people have, you know, been through and learning from it, um, you then think of, okay, I may not do that and I may just go through the path of, you know, stability. So I've studied business administration mm -hmm. um, as an undergrad. Um, and that was um, my attempt to um, and get in a, uh, the corporate world, um, becoming an employee of somebody, um, work from nine to five and get my wages and reduce the risks of, you know, following into the traps that caused me as a kid having financial difficulties. And I did not want my kid, if I, you know, back then thinking about it, to go through the same um, um, circumstances I had had to go through, not knowing that those these circumstances were the same and the very um, purpose um, um, who made me who I am back mm -hmm. then, I wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. um, so going through that, um, it was was tough at the time and and I, I thought about I don't want my kid to go through this uh, ever I don't want my kid to um, have to think about how they're going to go to school because I could not afford public transport because all the money I had I, I did um, my mom had was to pay for the high school fees um, to the best school in the neighborhood um, but Sema, nothing was spared. There was absolutely um, every single dollar used towards that. And and then, okay, I just didn't want to have the same experience passed on to the next generation. So I've, ended, I've decided, right, I want, I'll quit my uh, entrepreneurship uh, soul. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do uh, my soul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll 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 stop being an entrepreneur and I will I'll I'll get a day job as they say, right? I'll mm -hmm. get a day job and I will just fall into the system and just um just get on and then do stuff as every people I thought would um I I thought was successful would have done. Um become an engineer, then I've studied engineering here. Um, one, again, looking for the stability I I didn't have growing up financially. Um, and then and then working as an engineer after studying it, um, oh my God, it was so boring. But wait a minute, we come back to that, but wait a minute, because yeah. you back home, you did your degree. Did you work yeah. nine to five as I did? And how else were you? Uh, <laughs> well, look at me, how else were you? <laughs> a, uh, killer, the, a killer. <laughs> it was terrible. It was absolutely a killer. Um well with with I mean life took on right and and then growing up and I, I could not just sit back and you know 
get my uh, financial subsidy from my parents, which I have never had, never had. So I had to work. So I worked in different joints. Then I worked as, um, as um, um, back then there was something called land house. Land house was like a bunch of computers on network mm-hmm. connected by a cable. <laughs> uh, and we used to play games, right? Yes. I was 16, maybe, maybe 15. And um, I used to love that job because I could play. I had, I, I met a lot of people um, and I get paid um, very little, but I, you know, they would have, you know, do me for the month. Mm-hmm. Um, my mom approved that job because it was a day job. <laughs> was <it? laughs> uh, I had to have asked permission for her uh, to work. And and then that was that. She she thought it would be all right. So I met a lot of people then. Um, I used to be very connected to sports. Um, I still am today nowadays. Um, and then through then I could finance my sports uh, fees, mm-hmm. um, things like that. I could do all of that, you know, just because I was working. Um. Well then. After that, after this, after school and, you know, engaging work while, you know, studying my undergrad, again, working throughout, mm-hmm. I've, I've started working as a salesman mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and that things began to, to, to shift. Still a day job, still working for somebody else and things just, you know, carried on. I was working, um, selling clothes at the mall uh, mm-hmm. for Levi's. Um, I was good looking when I was younger. <laughs> <laughs> and wearing Levi's so, uh, and be a model. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had a, all the hair was quite nice and all of it, sports body, all of it. And then, and then I had to then move on to a better organization. So I went to work for Coca-Cola Company. So again, as a salesman, began there as a salesman. Um, my gosh, I learned so much, so much. Um, I, I met a lot of people. I got to know the underbelly of the town, Rio de Janeiro city, and the adjacent um, neighborhoods. Uh, as a Coca Cola salesman, you go to every single hole in Max City every single <laughs> tell me why you were well connected then <laughs> I was and I was given a car um for to work and the car had that sign Coca-Cola sign in the car I mean you can get anywhere with that car because you're selling Coca-Cola right people so, love you <laughs> and you're yeah like, oh. <laughs> Exactly. So um, I then began to enjoy the, the, the work because, again, it was next to entrepreneurship, was next to, um, to uncapped potential. Um, it was close to a, a growth that I was expecting for myself and the network that would take me to the next step. And I was so in love with that. Then I start to be, you know, I start to get good at it. And and then I was um, going into places like Rio de Janeiro favelas, and and going in it with the Coca Cola car. Forget about bulletproof cars. Forget about you know anything. That that car was your was your authorization to go through your red carpet. Literally a red carpet. <laughs> exactly. Back then, you, you couldn't place an order over the phone. So you had to, the, the salesman had to go to the local pub, put an order, and go back, plug in the in the fax machine cable, and that goes to the factory who delivers the, the, the goods in the, couple of next, in the next couple of days. So my presence, that meant if this guy doesn't come through, guess what? We're not having Coca-Cola, baby. So let this guy through and come over. <laughs> <laughs> the 
Yes. So yeah. Because you felt like welcomed everywhere you went. Oh, <laughs> everywhere. Every single person in every place I ever I have ever been under the brand Coca Cola, and the brand talks a lot. Back then, um, I was I was welcomed, and and then I've seen a lot of things. Um, which I could have never seen if it wasn't for the experience I was, you know, um, being offered through that company. So I learned so much. It gave me a absolutely life lesson and which I still use today. And, and then move on from that to, um, yeah, to the okay. point I've moved to Australia. So now is the point. What made you to think about moving to Australia? Was something, or even leaving Brazil? Because was something that happened or we started when you were little, uh, or something that was just like growing as you saw videos, TV, or anything that motivated you to a new adventure? What happened? Well, the truth is, I working at Coke. I was, I was, I was getting good at it, right? And I was promoted to higher positions, higher positions, and so on. So, I got this job to work for the best of the best clients Coca Cola had has. And then I was dealing with all these big accounts, right? Called special clients. Mm -hmm. And I had um, uh, an argument with my manager who thought I was um, um, I, I was cheating the system um, by not turning up to work and doing things I, you know, I wouldn't I would have never done. That deeply offended me, and I had an argument with her. And then, and then she worked work out of the background as I was being promoted to another job, which I was moving on to a higher pay. I was then made redundant, and I was like, okay, that was a lesson, and I learned. Okay, right. What do I do now? So I started looking for jobs. I was 21 and, and oh, I was yeah. like, okay, what do I, 21, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I can't just sit down and do nothing because that's just not me. I was going nuts. It's like, I need, I need money. I need you, you know, I need to do stuff. And then I started looking for work. So I went to a job interview in Rio at a neighborhood called Baja da Tijuca, somewhere near where I used to live. And then, and then I, I, I spoke to this guy who loved me and said, look, the job is yours. This is the pay. It's better than I, was, I would have get at Coke. Yeah, I was like, fantastic. All good. And then, and then he's like, all right, so just give me a couple of days and, and then we can get started. And a week went by. A month went by, two months, three months, and I was very de depressed and no one called me. And I was like, I just I'm wasting my time here. I really don't have time to waste. So I follow up with this guy. He was deliberately, um, deliberately um, 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 avoiding me. So eventually he came clean and said, look, there's, there's no job. Um, the job is over. That's it. Done. I just couldn't handle it. And I was like, what do I do now? Um, so I've looked around other jobs with, I never looked at the job as what I want to do. I've looked at the job as what you wouldn't pay me. Mm -hmm. What does it pay me? Well, if it pays well, I'll apply for it. If it doesn't, nah. okay. And the jobs that would have paid me to what I want, uh, what I want to earn, we're all asking for English. You have to speak. 
And I was like, okay, well, I need to suss it out. I need to fix that problem. Well, if the problem I've got is that my ability of speaking English, that it's non. <laughs> and, and, that's, that's, <laughs> and, and, and that's the distance between, you know, where I am to a better pay job, which uh, takes me elsewhere. Well, I, I just need to fix that. And and then I had this um, cash out payment from 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 uh, when I left Coke, um, and all this money was I was um, um, saving it. Um, so then I come to my mom after this interview with these guys. I say, Mom, I deserve better than that. I, I, I'm very sad today because these guys disappointed me, and. I, I did not like that. I, I'm, I'm very sad today, mom. I say that to my mom. Mm. My mom, my mom that day was transformed. She was absolutely, she was feeling, um, uh, she was feeling depleted. She was feeling a failure when I said that to her. And that was the day I started looking, where do I go? Mm -hmm. And because my mom couldn't do any more for me, and mm -hmm. despite she wanted to, I, I today I feel her her powerless feeling. Of, I can't do anything about that, and my son's just here, you know. And feeling the pain, oh, feeling the pain, pain. you know. Yeah. Till now, I, I get emotion about that. Till now, Imagine. so I tell you what. That day, my mom wrote down on her agenda. The day of that interview was the day I decided to move to Australia. That was 16 years ago. Every day until now, she, on that day, she gets very An sad. Anniversary. <laughs> oh. She so, gets very sad. And, and then, then. Sad, but she gets happy as well because you do. Yeah, like, yeah. Th right, things so. worked out, yeah. So, and then she's like, okay, son, I'll support you. What do you want to do? And I was like, mom. I need to fix this English issue. I just can't talk. Everybody's asking for it. Shell is asking for it. Chevron is asking for it. Petrobras. And I want to be one of these, you know, big bosses there. What do I do? I need to learn the language. So I've looked around. What do I do? You know, where do I go? So America, everybody goes to America. I'm yeah. just going to be another one there, you know, with that stigma. I didn't want to have. Um, that's my view at the time. Mm -hmm. And I thought about, okay, Canada, fuck no, true cold. Um, right, what else? Um, so Ireland, too hard. Um, the UK, yeah, okay, in the UK. Mm -hmm. And then I put in an okay basket. South Africa, yeah, that's, yeah. that's something I would love to go. It's, you know, Kind of a same hood, people a bit like you know, <laughs> you know. And I was like, okay, Africa is cool. I want to. I, I would go to Africa. Then New Zealand and Australia. Then um, the second filter was, okay, I can't. I can't have someone to sponsor me. My mom just couldn't. I need to find something. Um, and and I need to find a place where I can work. And then, well, I could not work in, in the UK. It was illegal. I could not work. Um, I mean, Africa work. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> just got, I, I come from Brazil. We are the same. We have the same problems. So I, I need to get a step up, you know. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> oh well, the African people, you know what I'm talking about, maybe. Um, and I was like, okay, well, New Zealand, New Zealand sounds good. So I had this client um, who, his name is Roberto, and he he owned a, a fuel station in the state of uh, Rio de Janeiro, in the city of Niterói. Mm -hmm. He had that fuel station. He was a very successful man on my views at that day, at that time. And and he had a very successful business to what I understood it would be back then. 
And then he said, Rafa, right. New Zealand, it's too far. It's not been there, mate. You know, just try something, some, go somewhere else. It's like, okay, fine. I've all, almost eliminated every other country. So it's only Australia now. You know, let me have a look. And then I've looked it over. Okay, well, I can work there. 20 hours a week, better than nothing. Yeah, beach. Um, yeah, it's far as, but yeah. hey, the, the weather is okay. But where can I go in Australia that I make the most of my time there? What's the best bank for my buck? So my understanding at the time was like, I have to be as far away as, as from any other Brazilian. So I would immerse, submerge in the English culture and mm -hmm. learn the damn English. And I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to do, mom. I've got a whole plan down, mom. I'm going to Australia. And, you know, the farthest place I can ever be is called Perth. Where? Perth. It was, I wasn't, I wasn't say Perth, as I said. I was like, it was something, you know. And, uh, and my mom was, yeah. Batch, 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 batch. Something like that. And my mom was like, where is, where on earth is that place? Mom is here. And then she's like, where's Sydney? I always knew Sydney. Sydney is here, mom. And she's like, my God, it's the other half. What, what is in there? I've never heard of that place. So, mom. This is me, myself, is, and I. <laughs> exactly. Mom, the plan is to learn and come back. Then I finish my English problem. I get back here. And I, you know what? I'm going to nail every single interview that comes ahead because I ain't got no problem with interviews. Mom, my problem is English. That's my problem. Mom. And then she's like, oh my God, are you sure about it? And I said, like, man, I'm very sure. I've never been as sure as I am. I'm positive, mom. And I said, like, oh, well, let's do that. Feel sorry for her. She did not. I would never come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, Rafa. Yeah. Yeah. But that was the story. Okay. Um, how I got here. It's nothing fancy. It's borderline, you know. It's it that's the truth, black and white. But the thing is, you're truth. looking to solve a solution and working with newcomers. Uh, what I normally see is uh, they come with experience, they come with qualifications, and they see all these jobs available and they don't understand why they don't get the job. And one principle is you are in a country that speaks English. You need to speak the language. At least. <laughs> right? And if you are, the question is, or, uh, and, and they think that they don't speak enough when they speak. But if you speak, is polishing your English, is improving, is learning more, is articulating uh. more. Mistakes we always have because English is a, a second language. We even get mistakes when, yeah, on language. Portuguese. Yeah, yeah. right? So yeah. is the question is not making this as a big fuss and say, oh, I cannot do it. People cannot understand me. Well, people can understand you when you make the effort to be understood and also to understand others. So English is one thing. And the other thing, why can I get a job? The other thing is the visa. You chose the wrong visa to come to Australia. And I believe that's one part you came here as a student, you knew that you would be working 20 hours. So how long took you to leave that space of being a student and working as a student? As a student? Uh, how was this? Uh, trajectory for you coming to Australia thinking knowing that you had um, a mission to learn English that's what you had and you were prepared yeah. to work to uh, help yourself to pay your bills so mm -hmm. tell us a little bit more about your journey oh well look it's it I look I um it's not different to um I guess a lot of other people who yeah. Uh, made it work, you know, who actually um, was, I guess, 
uh, successful in staying here. Um, but one thing I can tell you for sure, and I'll, I'll, I'll get into that in a second, the amount of information and resources available today to, to whoever is coming to this country is, is gigantically, you know, um, better. It, it's it, it's so much greater than than if you compare to when we come from. Yeah, you know, um, we had rumors of things, even though it, the internet was there. The content wasn't. We yeah. we, we just could not find out. Yeah. I recall having to. You know, when when calling home, calling my 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 girlfriend at the time, which is my wife today, um, I had to I had to stay in a line of public phone with an international card <laughs> on my hand and talk quick because the thing was just dressing up like like there's no tomorrow. It's like, hey love, I'm here, I'm doing well, don't worry, we get together. Um, I'll call you some um, on, on that day again at the same time. Okay, okay. And I tell you what, it was busy. The the sometimes <laughs> the, the public phone, the public um, phone was busy, and, and you know it's, it had to make my way around. And the weather wasn't great, too, as you know. Perth weather. Yeah. You know, yeah when like it rains, it rains. Night. When you when the winds, <laughs> it blows you. You know. And I and I was having and there is not a public phone in in, in every second corner, so you've got to walk. I used, to, I used to do in Brazil that every corner had a public phone, right? So you exactly, could... and everything was so far no cars. And how could I find the public phone if I had no phone, as in an I Apple, you know? the Google, uh, the no. Google? Like, where's the nearest public phone? I mean, it's uh, Siri. It's not like, yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, uh, the, the world was different, you know, you, even though uh, we had many other commodities and facilities compared to years ago, I, I, I completely understand that. Still much, 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 much less than what is available today. So um, that's uh, a statement I want to make. So thinking on... Um, how I got to understand what I need to do to stay here. Again, going back to my um, primitive instance, as in, okay, if I need to, you know, if, if I don't want to go through the same struggle I've been as a kid, I need to be successful. And I used to look around who is successful in this country. Mm -hmm. And and with the you know the least amount of knowledge I knew I had, I I understood straight away that the successful people uh, was um, related to engineering jobs, and I was like, oh, well, this guy, this guy is successful, you know, at superficial um, views. Well, you see this guy, this guy is successful. What does he do? And I just like go after him, say, and observe what does guy do, and and then eventually I come along and ask him, do you know this guy? A friend of mine who would have, you know, articulated better in English than I could. I say, yeah, I do. Well, this guy is an engineer. And then get in contact with other people, other Brazilians, for instance, who made the move to Australia in a, in a different circumstance than I, I, I had, were coming here as an engineer. Yeah, it was a um, big at that time. Yeah, and I was just like, mate, you got the world. <laughs> mate, honestly, mate, look at you. And I, and I was like, wow, so I, I've got to become an engineer too. What do I have to do to become an engineer? And then going through the course, paying the fee, studying a lot, and suddenly become an engineer. So, um. Back then, the process I, I, I used to realize what I need to do to stay here and be successful was observing what other successful people would, were doing. And other successful people, to my view, back then, 
were all working in engineering related works. Mm. And then it's like, okay, well, I need to become I'm, if that's the problem, I know what is the problem. Let's solve the problem. Let's become an engineer. Done in that say, I will become an engineer. So I've signed up for the engineer course. My goodness. Oh, uh, my goodness. Your poor mom didn't know anything about this. It's like, oh, oh my God. I'm telling you what, that was <laughs> hard ass. That was so hard. <laughs> I can imagine because engineering is a very complex subject. And then even in our own language, uh, right, you need to have that kind of uh, dri uh, drive to do it, uh, not just because a good pay, right? And then... <laughs> I'm not cut for that. Honestly, yeah. I had to work twice as hard as as a normal person, you know, who's got some engineering and skills would have. Plus, I my English wasn't great, but I had no time to worry about it. So I had to make it. I had to make the move. Like I said, I, I did not have anybody to sponsor me. My wife and I. My wife back then, she was my girlfriend. And she was just as broke as I was, you know. We were like, "Oh my God, we, we gotta, just we gotta work out." My, my shoulder to not fall. <laughs> pretty much, <laughs> yeah. Pretty much. So we were a broke couple, um, trying to find a way to, you know, to get by and try to do something good. And then with our limited resources, and I mean, there were there were no migration agents. There were no no mentorship. There was, yeah. There was nothing. We were, you know, we were given a gun, a rumble. Uh, like, yes. <laughs> and, and then do it. Put the knife on your do. on your teeth and go. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh um, goodness! Yeah. And then you, you went through was like very difficult situation. You have done your engineering degree. Then you said before that you went to work. As an engineer, what kind of engineer you decide to become? Like civil, mechanical, what kind of engineer did you do? Civil and structural engineer. So it was a, a boring situation that you look oh. at things and oh my goodness. <laughs> I got the I sorry, I got the I was I was doing my course and just before you know before um ending the course, um the visa um I was in um was going to expire to expire and then I could apply to um the graduating visa at the time. So then after the graduating visa I could apply to the skill visa, but it's a lengthy process and requires you know applications and so on. So I was thinking again, right, what is the problem? Well, I do think like an engineer. That's where I I'm so, well, thinking yeah. the process. So. Yeah, I do think like an engineer, but that's about it. And and then it's like, okay, what is the problem? The problem is the visa. Right. Let's focus our attention to fix that problem. How can I fix that problem? And I was like, okay, so I need a visa. How do I get a visa? So I can get the visa by applying through SKU, applying to um, okay. the no no the the graduating right. visa yeah work as an engineer obtain experience then apply to the skill visa that's right and I was like okay well that's a solution is that a cheaper way of doing the same and I was like yes there is what is it. Well, but that's very hard. You've got to find somebody who sponsored you as an engineer, and you can apply in the in the region at the time was the beginning of uh, Perth regional visa for skilled migrant. Yeah, and I was like, "Well, that's all right. I can do that." And and then again, skills that we learned back, right? My mom taught me. If you want to find a job, you go and find it. You don't wait for the job to come to you. You go and you find the job. And with categorically speaking, she said exactly like that with these same words. Um, and then 
I, I remember printing resumes uh, back then, put it in a folder under my arm, hit the road, knock the door. And I, and I was like, oh, I need, I, I can't do, I can't do just, <clears throat> just like that. I need you to do better than this. So I get a set of drawings from, from my work, from, you know, from, from my studies. Um, so my designs and stuff like that. Um, so I print a portfolio of my designs. Um, well done. Um, and, and I cover letter, which I never knew I needed for. It's like, what well, it's a hell of a cover letter. I mean, it's a bunch of crap packed in one page that you tell someone what you don't really think. And I was like, okay, I've got to do that. <laughs> and, uh, now. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, uh, some people just copy and paste, right? <laughs> well, I, that's, that's what I did. What do you think I've done? <laughs> you copy and paste. <laughs> copy and paste all of that crap that people, you know, Anyways, I never thought about that. Anyways, it's like just, okay, just do that. All right, done the cover letter, done the, the, the other resume, and the portfolio of designs. Mapped out who are the engineering firms in in the city. I mean, here in Perth, there's a lot. So I went on and on and on for days. My wife was like, well, "Why are you doing that? You're not even. You haven't even graduated." And it's like. But if I wait to become an engineer and then graduate, I would then have to apply for another visa because the one I have currently will be gone. And then we don't have cash to apply for another one. So we need to go straight on to this one. And, and that's it. That's what we're going to do. And, you know, once you finish your degree, you've got the, the holidays time, right? And over the holiday, that's the window I had to find a job. I mean, to finish my degree and say, hey, I'm an engineer for God's sake. Now I can start work. When? Yesterday. Give me the job. Yeah. So I then set up my camp and my campaign before I became, b- before I had my, my certificate. Mm-hmm. Because if I found someone who would have, you know, would be willing, crazy enough to, to employ me, I, you know, I had the dice, got done. And then it's like, okay, let's go on to it. And so I did, Sam. I went like every single day after, I mean, within the window of opportunity I had between work and study. Just so you know, engineering is, it's full-time with study, right? And you've got, you've got all these crazy time shades, right? And and to provide, I used to work at night shifts. Mm-hmm. But I worked night shifts in a glass factory. So I studied a whole day, mm-hmm. so tired, and went home, slept for an hour, an hour or two, maybe, if I could. Um, and then I would have, you know, drive through like 30Ks to this glass factory. So... I could find some um, a little bit easier to work on, you know, but no, I had to work with glass, right? It had to be uh, at night. Yeah, it had to be glass. And then and then that's what I did. So I used to work overnight and start during the day and sleep whenever I could. Um so I've done, I've done this through throughout the course. And um Finally got, you know, to, to the end and and applying for jobs in the meantime. And I was going on and on and on and on. And then suddenly I got this job. And and the lady, I mean, this the the reaction from 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 the employee, the employers um uh, was was of shock. They were not used to have anybody knocking their doors with a resume. A portfolio of designs uh, and a cover letter. Say, hey, you got a job. This is what I can do, um, and that's it. And then, and then, I found this job, and then they they employed me based on what I have given them. So I started working uh, doing drawings um, as um, 
civil structure engineer and detailer mm -hmm. um, doing steel structures sections for the mines um, as in the modules to um, in I mean as we extract or you've got a process that and then there are many ways in many processes in many stages of processing iron ore and I used to work designing um, uh, detailing the designs from the senior engineers um, and setting up for fabrication the you know the parts for for these um, steel structures and then that was the most boring work I could have ever find for myself. I developed the ability of sleep with my eyes open like a fish. I was in front of the computer um, doing drawings, sometimes just reviewing drawings because we were not busy. They were in the hope of a big project coming through and therefore they hired new people to um, take on the new project that never can. So I was there honestly busting my head on the wall, sitting down and doing nothing. And I, that was getting me so bad, but I still have to put up with that because I uh, guess what? I was getting married. Now mm -hmm. I had a wedding to pay. <laughs> yeah. And that was it. So you did it. So you got your your PR through that job, or you got yes. So as soon as you got your PR through that job, what was the decision after that? So now I'm free. I can do whatever. Well, I was made redundant from that job. <laughs> the productive like was not so good. <laughs> well, they like I said, they they. I obviously, I did not get the work they were expecting and they had to let a bunch of people go. Like there was a lot of people just being made redundant. But by then I had my PR and I couldn't care any less. And I was like, oh, oh so sorry. Uh, look, I'd love to work here, but you know, goodbye. Um, again, um, I had to find something to do. So a very good friend of mine, and I did not want to go back to engineering ever again. It's like, no way. I'm never going to go through this again. So I need to find something else to do. Let's let's see what life brings. A good friend of mine I introduced me to a car dealership. And, and then I was like, okay, I... I've got to make up time. I have to make some cash. I have to provide and all that, you know, the responsibilities that we have that doesn't stop. Let's, let's see what it, you know, let's see what it looks like. So I went to work for this massive asshole, but I can tell you with a big mouth that he is a horrible, <laughs> horrible human being. Really? Uh, oh, terrible, terrible. Absolutely no regrets to say that at any time, even if he's here telling a right on in his face, but it's a terrible person. Um, um, I don't I don't hold anything back because I also have learned a lot from, from that experience. Well, you've learned a lot from but his never the, experiences, right? Yeah. <laughs> Nevertheless, he's still an asshole. But the company and the boss of the company company were absolutely fantastic he was just a salesman and i was a mr nobody from brazil um, who couldn't speak really well really um, and didn't have much experience so i was set up to be his his um his assistant, assistant. because okay. he was a very good salesman and he used to put on a lot of volume of work and it's like well, because you're very good, you get an assistant. So I used to do the run work for him. Just, you know, uh, the paperwork and park the cars, deliver the cars and things like that. Um, but then suddenly, I guess um, my persona took over and suddenly the, you know, 
the people in that business understood that I could do more than that. And, you know, luckily they took me away from that asshole um, and, you know, knew my engineer background and thought, hey, Rafa, you're but an engineer, mate. You, you know numbers. It's like, oh, yeah, 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 I do, of course, yes, I do. Uh, mate, you should become a finance manager. And I was like, finance manager? Tell me more about it. It's like, don't worry, go have a chat with this guy there. He will tell you all what you want to know. <laughs> Off I went. And then the story goes on. Um, I was given the opportunity to work with who I believe are the best business managers, uh, finance managers, finance brokers the industry had. And they were all setting up at the very same time I was starting. So the joint was just taking off. And I was given the opportunity to work with them. And I learned so much till now. I hold very high respect to all of them. And we became friends, and especially a lady who I, I, I really I look up for her really well. And she was my mentor at the time, learning. And today we are colleagues in the same industry where I... I'm nominated the best of the country, the best of the 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 state, as in I have come from with and and put in practice everything that she had taught me at the time, and I have become the best of what the industry have. Um, and that was it, it's great, it's great, and I can tell it with a mouthful. It's <laughs> every year, you know, I am. constantly, <laughs> constantly, and and she's absolutely great. Now she, uh, we 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 good friends, and I have many, and I hold very close relations to all of these people I met back then. So, you know, you get assholes, but you also get the good people. But it also yeah. helps you to understand what you don't want to be or become, right? Absolutely. And yeah. then that's the the uh, benchmark for you. Below this, no way. I am above these waters. Yeah. So yeah. And what is very interesting, Rafa here, sorry to cut you off, is the little boy that had the finances on his hand that thought about having a, a business to create the environment and making the money grow. Works now helping people to understand their finances and making their money grow. Yeah. So how you had to go through everything else, tick all the boxes to say, not, 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 that's what I am. So sometimes getting the norm seeing the norm as we are part of the norm. And because you were put off of entrepreneurship, you thought you had to do this to be successful. But you just proved that you came back to the original idea of what success means to you. Absolutely. Uh, you know, and it's and it was, it all went very naturally. Yeah. But, you know, frustration, Sama, were many hard times, you know, times that we thought we doubted ourselves, uh, my wife and I. Yeah. Many, many, many instances where we thought about, oh my God, what's going on? Um, in my life, I see, like I said, I'm a religious person, um, uh, but I can now maturely understand the plan of God in my life. Mm -hmm. And I no longer... I mean, I hope I'm no longer disputing the facts or things that happens, but accepting and running with it because the understanding and the clarity comes with time. Yes. And the clarity is, in my life, my experience is bright as Las Vegas, you know, science. <laughs> yes. You know, it's like, 
this is it you idiot now you understand and it's now like, you oh, right. yeah. I, yeah, oh, I got yeah. it yeah <laughs> now i got it that, that is a, a metaphor uh when a guy uh, also was um, sharing with you here what we can see we sometimes ask god or uh, or any any um anyone above us that we believe to help us but we don't see the signs we never see the signs until the point that that's it right uh, and this this metaphor is a pharma where um his little town was getting uh, flooded and it was a big uh, thunderstorms and rains come and everything and then um the um the uh, fire brigade went to his house and said, look, we are evacuate, evacuating everything because the rain is coming, uh, the floods are rising. No, 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 God, you help me. I stay here until God help me. So mm. many people came to tell him, hey, you need to leave because the waters are rising. And then he went to the top of the roof. And then, no, God, you help me. The helicopter came. No, 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 I'm not going anywhere. God, you help me. And then uh, the water rose and then he drowned and and died and went to the guy to to meet God and said, hi, God, I can understand why you left me. I was expecting you to help me and everyone was bothering me and, and I was waiting for you. And he said, but I sent people to help you, but you didn't accept my help. Yeah. Sometimes we go against because we don't have the clarity and we yeah. want to prove something else. You want to conform with the norms instead of getting to know ourselves and see, wait, wait a minute. Let's and you have a good sense of resolving problems, Rafa, because you put the things in front of you, say, what is the problem right now? But yeah. probably you had to go and get mature enough to understand your journey yeah yeah look um and, you know doing this retrospective and looking back um, things makes a lot of sense but hey when you are there you just just don't know yeah. um, you, know, well. you yeah you 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 just relied on on your instincts and again back to uh, things as i was saying my mom have given me, has given me the best education she could, you know, that she could afford. And that paid off many, many, many times over. Many, many times over. Not only the education as, you know, um, um, academically speaking, you know, with all her psychology uh, knowledge, she would never apply those on me. She was always the have a hand at, you know, <laughs> ignorant, um, um, li very little patient on 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 educating, you know, and teaching me her her lessons, you know. But I understood. Maybe I was a tough kid, and I think I was a very hard kid. But you know, that's that's how things are, and I learned. But I could have taken a wrong turn. You could. And that's and that's how I think that God is there, you know. No, 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 mate, no, no, no don't think about it. Just go this way, keep it. sending angels to, you know, to help me with your not, hand. You know, not uh, deviate from this plan, you know. And that's very much like this um metaphor you just spoke about. Um, you know, I've sent you the fire brigade, I've sent you people, I've sent a helicopter. These are angels. You know, uh, these are um, God worked through mysterious ways and through other, you know, people to, you know, to help us and to 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 get him because he can. So and then and then that was it. So and the story goes on. You now didn't you know that story. Established. You are well established here with a family, kid, and helping others and supporting uh, other business, uh, especially sports that you like so much. Um, I'd like to ask you uh, if you had to 
given advice. You, I know you you talk a lot about the finances and it's the conversation that is very painful, especially for newcomers, because coming from another country, especially for middle career professionals, that they had a career, they had to leave everything behind and start from zero in a new country, right? What is the main advice that you would give to a newcomer who is here, is struggling to find their feet in this land? And especially uh, not oh, a, fee, a very fearful of their finance uh, financial situation. What would it be your approach or to suggest suggest something that is more, uh, uh, let's say, tangible for these newcomers to realize that there is light at the end of the tunnel? Oh well, <laughs> that's not a tough question. Look, looking back to my story, looking back to what my wife and I have been through, um, we have given everything. Mm -hmm. We never held back. Mm -hmm. So we have committed ourselves to what we were going through mm -hmm. and committed the best of what we had. Mm -hmm. So we never doubt that we wouldn't get it. That was never a question to us. We, we, we believed the things um, would work out to the best. Maybe because, I don't know, I, like I said, I fall back through, through my spiritual, spiritualization many times. But Perhaps if we take that spiritualization away and just think um, sectic about it, I have committed my energy to, 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 my, to the full. And that's what I think people who are thinking about doing this should have done. Um, they need to get they give to commit to it they need to give the best what they can um but not 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 being naive thinking that things may not go wrong mm -hmm. but just being resilient to endure when things goes wrong by giving the best what you can so resilience and persistence, resilience and persistence. Commit yourself, be resilient, and be persistent. It will happen. It's just a matter of time. Matter of time. Nothing else. Yes. Just, just time. I don't have time. Everybody has time. Everybody. But everybody. You don't have a priority time. that you don't know what you need working towards, but everyone has time to. Yeah to get we so, all got time. coming from brazil and i remember when i came to australia uh it was very difficult to find our food here especially our state food like beans or something very rare um and, and nowadays it's very easy you can find our food everywhere what kind of food that you love the most that you when you eat reminds you of your childhood, of your time of a little entrepreneur, of having happiness, uh, of or having ideas that made you happy having them? I've got two foods, two. I'm, I'm, I'm very connected to smell. Mm -hmm. That, that sent, set me back to memories, you know, um, from the past. But... Um, Chicken parmigiana. Ah, <laughs> would your is, mom make it for you? Ah, <laughs> uh, my mom makes chicken parmigiana every time I go. I go back. Ah, <laughs> and uh, you know when I when I get home in Brazil, there's a big dish of chicken parmi, but the homemade one, right? So mom's. I love that. Mom's, <laughs> mom's, and the other one, the other one. It's a memory from the first day I got to Australia. Oh. Yeah, interesting. So growing up in Rio, we watched 
American shows. Yes. And American shows in the breakfast, you see they eating cereal with milk yep. and honey. Yes. And I was like, oh, that's super cool. We don't have that stuff in Brazil. Yeah. We eat bread and we drink coffee with milk. <laughs> yeah. Correct? Right. Right. That's the normal Brazilian do it, right? A fresh bread from the bakery, which now I miss a lot. <laughs> and it's rare in Brazil, I tell it's, you. <laughs> well, so so fresh bread from the bakery purchased every morning. Um, that's what I used to have there. But then um, watching the shows on in um, in um, on the telly um, from 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 the US, I was thinking, I said, that's pretty cool. You know, just putting all of that big box, you know, bottle of milk that's passive, and and they it's like feeling, oh, that's... feeling that I'm part of this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then that's then I got here in the homestay. And and the homestay had the you know the 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 breakfast served on the American kitchen style, which is every house here, right? And I was like, well, I'm walking a movie. That's great. <laughs> um, and then she brought along cereal, oh. milk, and honey. And you and feel I like it's like <laughs> it's just like the show. <laughs> it's it's real, and the bottle is exactly the same. It's like wow that's so cool and then i and then i've seen my brother right the you know the 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 homestays um, son um and i've seen him on how how they did it so he put a bunch of cereals a bunch of milk and a dash of honey on top of it and i was like okay gonna do the same i couldn't speak a word right <laughs> A word, and I was like, "Yeah, done." So I sat down and I ate, and I ate, and I ate, and I loved it. I never had that flavor before. It's like, oh, that's weird. It's simple. It's just milk, cereal, and honey. But I never, I could never have that combination because one, the milk is not the same. Yes. Milk in Brazil not very good. Here is fresh. Mm -hmm. Um, cereal in Brazil, you can't afford it. You don't buy it. Right, you buy bread, and and honey. Well, honey, it's all right, but you you don't mix that kind of stuff, you know. And now I ate that. It's like, wow, that's amazing. So to today, when I'm a bit down, what I'm just feel feeling a bit like homesick. Maybe not homesick, but maybe the feeling of oh shit, <laughs> of going back to the simple time when things were a lot easier, when I never had. You know, I had none responsibilities, none, just just fresh in the country. I I pour a bowl of cereal yeah. milk and and honey, and I eat that. It's like nobody understands that. My wife, maybe she's she's here in the office. She's listening to this. She probably don't know that. Now she does. Um, but yeah, but now, but then then that re reminds me, remotes back to these times, you know. That's one of the things. The other thing is curry food. Curry. Never tried curry before getting here. That's 16 years ago. So, and next to where I used to live, there was this um, Indian restaurant. The smell of the food would have, put, you know, perfumed the whole neighborhood. And I have never, never, ever, ever smelled that before. So I used to wake up, uh, I, I used to come back to, the, the homestay I used to stay a little bit late and they would have started the kitchen. And going back, I used to smell that smell of curry. It's like, what is that smell? It's weird. Never smell it before, but it's kind of interesting, but weird. So to a diet, I've, I was introduced to Indian food. And I was like, well, I don't like that. Let me try again. Nah. I won't once again. <laughs> and now I'm addicted to it. You know, now I, and then when, when, if I smell Indian food, again, it takes me back to that time. Yeah. Straight away. 
That's a wonderful uh, analogy that you made because sometimes we don't perceive these kind of changes and we miss things, but we don't know how to explain them. So you explain exactly how you things were simple despite uh, you felt like overwhelmed with all the uncertainty that you had in your life. But comparing the responsibility that you had that time to what you have today, it's a huge difference. Massive. And then that point, it was so explorative. And now you have, like, I know many things now. It's if I get more, uh, to know more, I have more responsibilities. So it's yes. growing. So it's a point that you say, wait a minute, I, I, I need to stay here for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, how powerful is how the fun. mind, isn't it? Yes, the power of mind, it's amazing. It's amazing. And um, I remember when I met you, I believe uh, in 2016, 17, when I met you. And yeah, 16. Oh, yeah, it was, it was wonderful because I went to that networking event and then, or club, and then you were there and someone told me, um, he's Brazilian and I look at you and I heard you talking I said oh he's doing pretty well because uh, his accent is uh, not noticed as a Brazilian he's speaking well and he's well related so you could uh, walk around and talk to everyone and people knew you and I admired that since the moment I saw you for the first time because I didn't know you were Brazilian so for me you were just like another Australian or another person here that was successful. So that was the image that you uh, gave me that point in time. So when I, I heard that you were Brazilian, I was so happy inside saying, wow, someone here made it, you know, in the right way. So, and then we had a coffee chat and then I learned so many things uh, from you that you didn't cover today, uh, but it's amazing. Um, uh, uh, life career that you had a uh, roadmap that you came from one situation one uh, main objective and end up doing what you are doing today so uh, you have my admiration for all your uh, well, thank you. and and also your resilience to to be here and another question have your mom has your mom been uh, in Australia did she come to Australia before Took some time. Um, Too far. Coming through Australia, <laughs> coming through Australia was was for her was I guess was stepping. I think it was a stepping in an enemy um, place. You know, it's like the place that it's stole my son. My son. Away from me. <laughs> yeah, stole my son away from me. And yeah, uh, I, I respect that. I know it, it takes longer for some people, you know, than than from others. True, um, yeah, true. You know, true. Maybe get it. You know, live along with with the changes. And but being a father, um, I can't imagine how hard that was. Um, and it's very hard. Very, 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 very hard. I don't know whether I couldn't do that. Um, but she did. She had no choice, but she wasn't selfish. She realized that it was what I want to do. And that is an act of love just there. That's right. Just just understanding it's coming the time. It's it. This is it. I have it all, all roads have, have led you to, to this time. Yeah, I know you've been through this. Uh, yes. Yeah. When my son told me when he was 13 that he would move away uh, for his career uh, was a time when I questioned myself, what can I do when he leaves home? Right. So um, and also having the conscious a consciousness that he has his life. And as a young adult or leaving the teen time, uh, the last thing, last thing that you want is your parents around you bothering you and asking you and all the time you know and you it's a time that we flourish we want to explore more it's like yeah. being a toddler right we're walking and you want to go everywhere you don't know anything and especially moving to a new country you have so many things to explore and I did the same 
So mm -hmm. I had to put myself uh, on the shoes of my mom to think about how she felt when uh, I was away for so long. And I had to really uh, embrace that freedom of letting go and do what he wants to do. Uh, whatever he does, I am here to support him. So uh, yeah. go and live your life. If you need me, I am here. Uh, but the question is, I'm not there at telling him what to do. I, even sometimes, the beginning, I was like tempted to do. And he gave me that kind of, mom, okay, <laughs> be quiet. Don't say anything. Uh. <laughs> Well, you, you, uh, you, you and my mom, I've got to tell you, you you've got a very strong, <laughs> um, I suppose, you know, um, resilience for that. I don't know if I would have had that. To you, be have, you have. The time I don't know. I, I'll, tell, I'll, I'll tell her something. I, I tell my little girl, she's four, right? I tell her, wherever you go, I go. And she's like, what? <laughs> Just saying, whatever you go, I go. It's okay, then. <laughs> and your wife will look at you, go to, and you don't know what you're saying. <laughs> I go to, she, she, maybe I'm, she may be thinking, uh, I'm going to the toilet, that comes with me. <laughs> I'm going to my bedroom to sleep, that comes with me. I'm going to and school, going, and he's coming I'm with me. I'm going to school, that comes with me. Okay, well, that goes whatever I go. Fine. <laughs> She'll realize what I'm saying, what I'm saying. And later on, she will get that. But if she goes, whatever, at the time, I'll be there. I'll, no, no, no. I'm going to Amsterdam like your, you know, like your son. No, sorry, I'm moving there too. No, I thought, I tell you, I thought moving not to Amsterdam, I'm going to Portugal, any place in Portugal or Spain. Closer. That was <laughs> closer enough. For us to be yeah. together, and then I realized that it's not the question of being geographically together, but being more connected. And and I was in Amsterdam for I believe three weeks or two weeks, and I barely saw him because he was working. And and I said well, that's what's the point, right? It's the point mm. to have the connection, but does I guarantee you that if you yeah. live nearby, you'll be together? <laughs> Sorry. Well, if one day I come to that conclusion, maybe. <laughs> you need to Not go now. through the experience first, Rafa. I, I need to tell you this. You need to experience yeah. first. Yeah. Not <laughs> now. Everything in life you need to experience, right? And then you you, you realize it. Okay, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. So, uh, Rafa, thank you very much. It was a very enjoyable uh, conversation with you. And I must say to you, you are a real storyteller. Uh, storyteller. You should invest <laughs> your time to get your retirement telling stories. <laughs> and I'm even going to do stand-up comedies. You'd, you'd be great, man. You'd be great. So it's something that you have now that you can think about when your daughter goes away. You have something to do. <laughs> Maybe. Well, I'll tell you what. You know stuff that not very little people know now okay. a lot of people will get to know about it right <laughs> that's right <laughs> so thank you very much uh for your time for sharing your uh, life career journey and i'm sure many people uh you see uh, and hear your story and you relate themselves like going through what they are going through and getting inspired by where you are at now and how you be, you made what you made to be where you are so thank you, thank you very much for that and for your contribution to uh, people's uh, inspiration okay. it's a pleasure Sam. it's a pleasure and many thanks for having me to listen to my story um to find that interest interesting um yeah i'm 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 very humble to um, you know, to recognize that. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Oh, welcome. So uh, for you uh, watching this episode, be sure you uh, share, you comment, you like, and you subscribe to the channel. So thank you very much and see you next. Bye-bye.